There are two competing ideas out there. One says COVID-19 emerged from nature, and the other says it was a lab leak. How likely, in your opinion, is it that COVID-19 was leaked from the Wuhan Institute of Virology? What evidence do we have for that? It's, it's, um, this is a quite, actually a very important question. So at the moment, right, there, there are many uninformed um, voices supporting a lab leak, as you just said despite the lack of evidence. And these are everywhere, you know, from social media, political circle, mainstream newspapers, which is actually very bad, and hampering the international collaborations, you know, to trace the origin of the virus. We have this review. So our review was a very clear response to that. But we provided a quite comprehensive review in bringing all kinds of current scientific evidence that supports uh, zoonotic origin. And, of SARS coronavirus 2, and while addressing this misinformation supporting a lab leak. So basically, we're saying all current scientific evidence supports a, you know, that a novel virus, which, such as SARS coronavirus 2, which was unknown to us, to humans before, could not have been escaped from a lab, right? And the emergency of the virus is similar to other zoonotic viruses, such as SARS coronavirus and HIV, right? So the evidence we reviewed is quite comprehensive, ranging from previous um, experience learned from SARS coronavirus outbreak back in 2002 and other viruses and epidemiologic data from the early days of the pandemic in Wuhan and the final genetic and evolution evidence of the virus that the SARS coronavirus 2 are evolutionarily close to, okay? And the molecular and genomic evidence support the natural range of the virus, not a laboratory, you know, construct. So this is not possible from, you know, from a leak, from a lab. So if you look at the evidence, the scientific evidence, the arguments provided by the lab leak camp, um, I mean, how should we read into them? Do you buy them? No, those, those evidence are, and some of them are quite specific, right? For example, at the very beginning, they mentioned a, a particular, a short genetic code in the genome, right, called uh, furin Kulovich site. Because we're evolutionary biologists, that's actually in our domain. So we immediately know, you know, that particular code they claimed, you know, as evidence of, you know, engineering of the virus is completely like a joke. Because we know that um, these, that particular stretch of, you know, genetic code, they exist in, in other close related coronaviruses. And from evolutionary biologist's point of view, it's completely natural. I mean, it could be involved in nature. There's no need to it to be engineered in, in a lab. Yeah, Professor uh, Jiang, you talked about uninformed opinions. Uh, many of those so-called uninformed opinions actually come from commentators, from uh, the media, from politicians, uh, not from the science community. Um, is there a consensus of some sort from the science community, from scientists like yourself? I mean, if not, what are the sticking points so far? As we just discussed, right, um, that a lab leak could not have contributed to the emergence of the virus, right? Consider many, many levels of evidence we examine, right? Current scientific evidence does not support, you know, such scenario, I mean, the lab escape. So I think most scientists in the academia, particularly us, evolutionary biologists, would think SARS coronavirus to has a zoonotic origin, right? Although we still have not been able to identify the bat reservoir, right, nor the intermediate animal host, it has no problem that SARS coronavirus 2 could have involved natural, right? So, as studies from other scientists and us also suggested, right, mutation, right, this is a change of genetic code in the virus genome, right, mutation, recombination. So, so you know, basically, it's uh, switches of different pieces of genetic code of the genome, right, between different viruses. And natural selection, right, were sufficient, right, to select for the virus highly capable of human transmission, right? You don't need a lab, lab engineering to do that. What are the things that made it uh, difficult or perhaps more difficult than tracing, you know, previous uh, viruses? And uh, how important is it to really trace the origin of COVID-19? If we know how it happened for this one, we can pre prevent the next one, which is could be like very close, right, in the next five, 10 years. For this particular virus, like, um, you know, the differences, the difficulty 
the difficulties in finding our gene, the current virus is that um, we know that this is the second time that virus from the, this genus called beta coronavirus, a uh, subgenus Sarbaco virus, right? This is the group of virus which have pandemic potential, right? So the, this is the second time it emerged in China and led to a pandemic. The social and economic environment is also drastic different, you know, compared with the SARS coronavirus emergence in Guangdong back in 2002. And to identify the right intermediate animal, we need to increase our sampling, right? In the right wild or farm animal populations, right? Which are known to be susceptible to the virus, all right? And also to find the bad host, we need to increase our sampling across China and perhaps Southeast Asian countries, right? And so these are challenging words and may take many years to complete.